The man who will introduce Romney to this evening uh, was considered himself a possible number two on the ticket. Senator Marco Rubio is on his home tor turf, of course, here in Florida, and he told me earlier he considers this a special privilege. I'm honored to do it in my home state in front of so many people who uh, have known me for so long. And, but it's just a tremendous honor no matter where it is and what year it is. So, you know, a couple of years ago I was running for the U.S. Senate. I was an underdog. The only I could win all lived in my house. And four of them were under the age of 10. So I, um, I, it's been a long trip here, but I'm honored to do it. It's such an important time in our history. Without giving too much away, mm -hmm. how does this, your speech, how is it structured? How do you intro somebody like Governor Romney? Well, really, what I hope it does is it kind of sets the table for the last speech of the convention, and that's Mitt Romney's speech. And I think if you listen to everything that's happened throughout the week, you know, a lot of attention how successful he's been in the business world, but how about how successful he's been in his own house with as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather. So we'll touch on that for sure. We'll also touch upon the choice that this election presents, because at the end, this election is not a choice between two people or between Democrats and Republicans. It's a choice between two very different views of what government should be doing in our country, what government should be about. So um, I hope to leave that on the table for him to hit out of the ballpark. You've heard the criticism that he can't connect, that his likability is a concern. I'm not concerned about it. I'll tell you two things about it. First of all, I hope people get to know the, the Mitt Romney. I know he doesn't like to brag about himself, and you heard a little bit about that last night. He doesn't like to brag about what he's done. I mean, it's just, he's a very modest guy. He was likable enough to get elected governor of a state that doesn't vote for Republicans. He was likable enough to win this nomination in a crowded and competitive field. And look at the polling now. This president has had the advantage of incumbency, and yet we're competitive, and we haven't even started spending the money. So I think in November, he's going to be elected president. You know, with the selection of Paul Ryan, and obviously you were on that short list as well, a lot of people said, this is a bold pick. This is a bold move for the Romney campaign. Does it mean that this is going to be a bold general election? This election is about how to uh, control spending, how to grow our economy, how to create a tax code and a regulatory code that incentivizes people to, to invest in America, we're going to win that election. If this election is about other stuff, then they have a better shot. And that's why, because they don't want to talk about their record. You know, every incumbent president that's been reelected to say that you are better off than you were four years ago. This president cannot say that, and he doesn't even try to say that anymore. And so he wants this to be about other stuff, and in particular, the kind of personal attacks that they levy against Governor Romney, which are outrageous. So, um, you know, if this is an, an election about those big ideas, then I think we're going to win. We're going to win by a comfortable margin. Even on the issue of Medicare, which in a recent Washington Post ABC poll was 45-43, the Romney-Ryan ticket against Obama-Biden on Medicare, an issue that was, you know, third rail of politics. Because the American people are as well informed as they've ever been about the reality that Medicare spends more money than it takes in. And if it keeps doing that, it's going to disappear. It's going to go bankrupt. So the goal here is how can we save Medicare for the long term without having to change it for people that are on it now? And Mitt, Mitt, uh, Mitt uh, Romney and Paul Ryan have come up with a plan to do that. Barack Obama doesn't have a plan. If he has a plan to do that, he should present it. He's got a convention next week. Unveil your Medicare plan. Because if you don't have a Medicare plan, if you're in favor of leaving it the way it is, then you're in favor of bankrupting it. You know how that issue plays here. You know how important it is for seniors in this okay. state. What about that? Well, it's a critical issue in Florida. Three million people are on Medicare. One of them is my mom. One of them is Paul Ryan's mom. And it's a critical issue for, to be confronted funded and solved. But again, if you're in favor of leaving Medicare the way it is, you're in favor of bankrupting it. They're pr practicing uh, for the next uh, round of speeches, and this lady on the stage, uh, Latina, and uh, sh that is an outreach that your party is really trying to do. Well, first of all, I I've been asked about that a lot today. We haven't made these people up. There, We really do have a governor in Nevada named Brian Sandoval, who happens to be of Hispanic descent. Susana Martinez in New Mexico, who happens to be of Hispanic descent. Ted Cruz in Texas, who happens to be of Hispanic descent. These are real elected officials and who you. are Republicans and, and, con, and conservatives and me who happen to also be of Hispanic descent. Well, I think that shows that our message appeals to a broad spectrum of the American people. Now we just have to do a better job over a long period of time of making that argument that, that the natural home of those who want to leave their kids better off than themselves is the limited government free enterprise views of the Republican Party. Well, yet, Senator, when you look at the polls, Hispanics are overwhelmingly supporting President Obama for re-election, a 60-plus percent, depending on the poll, uh, how can that change before election day? Well, look, some of it is historic in nature. In essence, these are communities and towns and states, uh, California, because it's in mine, and so in New York, that happen to be bastions of democratic uh, politics. And 
so if people move there, they're logical that they would turn into Democrats or vote in that direction. But that's going to change, and how, here's how it's changing, because we're going to continue to make the consistent argument that if you want to leave your kids better off than yourself, if you want opportunities to be possible for your children that were never possible for you, if you want any hope and any dream that you had to be able to be achievable for them, free enterprise is the only way to do it. The Democrats are undermining free enterprise. The Republicans are trying to protect it for the next generation. But that's going to take some time. It isn't just going to happen in two weeks or two months. I mean, this has to be part of a broader, long-term strategy to ensure that limited government conservatism is a movement that has appeal to all Americans, including those of Hispanic descent. Your opponent in your Senate race, uh, who ran as a Republican and then as an independent, the former governor of Florida, Charlie Crist, is now endorsing President Obama and will speak at the Democratic Convention. What are your thoughts on that? I told you so. I mean, that's what I, that's one of the reasons why I ran four years, two years ago. It's because I, I felt that not only did not represent the views of the Republican Party, but in essence had really abandoned them. And that's why I ran in that primary. Look, he certainly has a right to do that. All everyone's very curious to see what he'll say at the convention and how he'll try to reinvent some of the things he said in the past or reconcile those things with his new position. Uh, my only observation is he's running out of parties to run under. <laughs> because when he ran against you, he was pretty hard on President Obama. For years, he bragged about being a Ronald Reagan Republican and said he was a Jeb Bush Republican. He was an ultra conservative and headed in a different direction. But look, to each his own, if that's what he wants to do. He has a right to do that. And um, we'll, we'll see how it all turns out for him. I wish him, uh, I guess, the best on, on his personal endeavors for sure. That was heartfelt. Uh, well, you know, obviously, <laughs> politically, we're not going to agree about uh, pre uh, President Obama. I mean, I'm certainly not going to be supporting President Obama's reelection. So are you optimistic about the general election, or are you pessimistic that this is going to fall into this just ugly, nasty battle? I'm optimistic that we're going to turn it into an, a campaign of big issues and big ideas. I'm optimistic that Republicans are going to talk about these things, and I'm optimistic that the American people are going to reward us for that. Yeah. Good luck on the speech. Thank you. Any uh, nerves heading in? Uh, not yet, but we'll see. When you get you up know, there? Look, uh, I don't know. It'll go by so fast that uh, I'm just excited to be able to do it. Yeah. Probably more excited than I am nervous. Yeah. Senator, thanks so much thanks. for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.